Hey guys, this is Dorian from Eternal Games with yet another video for you guys and in this video I'm just gonna walk you through our uh, pipeline of making our environments and I do have a uh, environment model which is this and these are the these folders are my sets of textures as you can see for each, each of the texture sets and before I get into the unity part of the video I want to show you just how these uh, UVs are set up so you can better understand what I mean so this is the model of the scene as you can see there's no uh, main props here because they're modeled and textured separately and these are the kind of the main parts of the scene which are not going to be used in any other scene or something like that so the UVs are set up like so, like here, and uh, you're going to see the uh, groups of textures when we go to Unity. I'm just going to show you how these are packed. Because this is a cheap indie game, we're not going to, uh, We, I mean, we don't have the luxury of uh, UVing and packing each one of the models in a separate UV tile. So we're gonna, uh, so we kind of uh, uh, group them into smaller groups, bigger groups, so we can um, use texture tiles to put multiple objects in one UV tile. And the ceiling and the floor are all copied, which means they have the same UV tiles, UV uh, shells. It's just that. You know, this is much cheaper to do, like so. Okay, so let's just uh, get the models into Unity. Now, I do have uh, my model imported, so I'm just going to drag it to the scene and reset transform. Here we are. You see now, you can see the texture tiles. Each one of the colors has its own individual UV set which means it's uh, each of them has its own uh, sets of UV, uh, textures which we're gonna apply in a minute so let's just get started we gonna start with the floor so I'm just gonna select the thing now uh, first uh, just to apply these textures to this model to this mesh we do have to create one single material I'm gonna name it floor Apply the model to the floor, and when I do have my uh, material selected, you see these checker boxes. These are where the textures are going to go. The first one is the base map. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this isn't the ceiling part. No, sorry about that. I'm going to the floor. Yeah, this is the one. Just, I'm going to delete this because I want to make it from scratch. You create material floor. There we go. Apply this to the floor. First one is the uh, albedo and transparency, like this. Now, when I say transparency, uh, the way Unity works is that the base map part of the uh, textures is the, uh, the it, it has the sRGB image, which is the base color of the image, which is the color and the material itself. And it also has an alpha map attached to it, which uh, happens on some models, not all of them, because this model has a cutout part, which is this, and the reason you don't see it is because you just gotta change the surface type from opaque to transparent. Now you can see. Now, if you don't have something like this in your model, in your uh, texture, you're just gonna leave this at opaque and it's not gonna work, it's not gonna do anything. The next one is the metallic, which is probably this, yeah. The metallic, the metallic also has an alpha, and the alpha for the metallic map is the uh, roughness map or the smoothness, as 
uh, Unity likes to call it. Next one is a normal map. Fix now. And height map. And finally, the ambient occlusion, which is called the occlusion map right here. Which is probably this. There we go. Now this material is all set up. I'm just going to apply it to the rest of the floors because they have the same UVs and the same type of texture. Now let's get to the next part. Ceiling, create material, call it ceiling. Okay, base color. Now I'm just, I'm just going to leave this uh, surface type at opaque because it doesn't have any cutouts, which means it's not going to lead an uh, opacity map because it doesn't have it. All right, this is uh, the Amir occlusion. This is the height map. The normal map. And you do have to change the uh, texture type from uh, for the normal maps because uh, the normal map is not uh, like the same. Uh, it's not the same as the other ones because it's a different type of texture. So if you're gonna uh, change it, you just gotta hit fix now or just double click on the texture uh, and open up the setting. I, no, just click on it once and it's just gonna bring up the settings. And finally, metallic map. Like so, there. Okay, I'm just gonna skip to the part that I've uh, applied all these textures and we're gonna go from there. Okay guys, I just imported all of my textures into my model. Now what we need to do next is the, I'm gonna import the uh, reusable uh, props let's just call them reusable props that i use on multiple occasions now these are the uh, models that are only going to be used in this particular scene they're not going to be used anywhere else that's why they've all been modeled and textured together but the re reusable models are modeled and textures uh, textured each one of them in a separate uh, scene so I'm just going to start uh, importing them and placing them where I want them to be. <clears throat> I've got them here. There we go. You need a low poly model and the textures of the model. And <clears throat> I am going to open up uh, and create uh, separate folders for each one of them. So just kind of drag and drop. Sorry. In the shelf. Okay. This is going to be here. Let's drag them here and reset the transformation. I'm going to put it in place and resize it to the size that it's supposed to be, but let's apply the textures first. There we go. It's the same process as the walls and the rest of the props. This is the AO. It's pretty simple, uh, straightforward pipeline, really.
Okay, well now we can resize the scale and transport the model to where you want it to be. Somewhere here should be fine. And if you're wondering how these models were made, uh, our power plant is a way that um, uh, my environment artist Ali kind of uh, models these in Maya. The both low poly and high poly models, they're all done in Maya and they're uh, then textured in the Substance Painter. And it just uh, gives me the low poly and the textures that I use in the scenes. I design the levels and I send them the models and kind of uh, completes it and textures it and send them, sends them back to me and I'm gonna do a time jump to when I've uh, imported all the models that I'm gonna need in this scene and then I'm gonna start the uh, lighting process okay guys I've just uh, imported all the reusable models I'm gonna use in this scene and the last one is the door model which I have two of and I just wanted to show you the little trick for this one, which is the uh, fact that uh, in addition to all the other maps that all the models had, this one also has an emission map, the emissive map, which means at some part of the model, there's going to be uh, surfaces that emit light, which is going to be used as a light source in the scene. So let's uh, make the material here call it door apply the material to model okay the first ones are the exact same way as the other ones the base map ambient occlusion the height map normal map and the metallic There you go. Just to turn on the uh, emissive map. You're just gonna click this checkbox, which just says emissive, and it's gonna open this smaller checkbox. And let's apply the emissive map here. And there we go. These parts are gonna be light sources in the scene. If I apply a material here, it's gonna do the exact same thing. Yeah. And to edit the light that uh, comes from these uh, surfaces, you're just going to have to click on this uh, <coughs> HDR button, pick a color, and this uh, part here is the intensity. You can increase it, and it's going to increase the light coming from the uh, light sources. And the reason uh, they're kind of looking like uh, they, they're glowing is it because I have the bloom post processing effect turned on which is a built-in thing in the uh, URP or universal render pipeline which is what I'm using right now so the next step is going to be the lighting of the scene and to do that I'm just uh, starting by deleting this directional light which is uh, kind of like something that uh, shows sunlight and unity and because this is an indoor scene. I'm not gonna need any uh, sunlight coming inside. I'm just gonna do the uh, lights on my own and We're gonna go to the lighting part next into environment and change this uh, uh, skybox material into None just to make this scene completely dark and this ambient color into complete black okay now we have no light at all and uh, as you can notice the emissive lights don't really affect anything in the scene and that's because to turn on the emissive lights we're just gonna have to uh, first start by selecting everything and going into the inspector and click static so it's just going to start 
baking the light maps into the scene which is what we need right now there are uh, two types of lights in unity one of them is the uh, baked lighting which is uh, applied to everything static which is not going to move things that aren't going to move in the scene and real-time light which uh, interacts with moving characters and animations and we need to use both of them in scenes like this but everything that you see in the scene these things are all static so I'm, uh, I, that's why I just clicked static for all of them and and I, <clears throat> I did turn on gener auto generate in the lighting tab uh, which means it's uh, gonna start uh, baking the maps as I move things around and change the lighting okay so the emissive lights are all applied right now so let's start with um, bringing our lights I'm gonna start with point lights Now these point lights can both be uh, baked and real time like this and you can change them from the mode over here and in the inspector but first let's start with the placing of the light I'm going to place it over here in the ceiling this is where the lights are supposed to be Okay, here we have the range, which is like the furthest point that the light is going to be able to reach. The color of the color, uh, the color of the light. I'm gonna use fairly a uh, fairly blue one. <coughs> okay, this is fine. And the range, like uh, okay, I've told you about the range. The real time, I'm going to turn it into baked because all my uh, objects in the scene are all static lights, static objects. And the intensity is the amount of light that's being emitted by the light source. The range is a little too small, so I'm just going to start it a little bigger, a little less intense. Okay, let's duplicate this light. Turn it about here. Alright, now let's check that in the game camera. Let's place the camera where it's supposed to be. Okay, now this is the current look. Let's uh, turn back auto generate on. And you know, baking the lights into your scene helps a lot with uh, the uh, modifying the scene because uh, real time lights are pretty expensive, and if you have a lot of them turned on, they, they can be uh, quite heavy for your model, uh, for your uh, computer, and the basic, uh, the final result of your game. So you need to be careful about that. I don't know why it looks like this. You know what, I'm gonna change the bait into mixed so they can emit both kinds of lights because that's what's gonna that's what you're gonna need. 
and the scene is a little too bright so let's just reduce the intensity of them to like uh, probably a 0.7 would be fine same for this one let's turn off auto generate okay 0.7 and let's add another light okay now it's looking much better half bad <clears throat> okay guys this is gonna be it for this uh, particular video and if you have any questions please ask them in the comment section and uh, if you like the content that we're uh, putting out please uh, follow subscribe like and turn on the notification button if you don't want to miss any of our videos and thanks for watching